Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Carolyn Bunting, and I'm General Manager of Internet Matters. Um, thank you very much for the invitation from Lucy Faithful to come here today and tell you about Internet Matters, which is a new not-for-profit um, joint venture that's been established by the four leading UK service, internet service providers. That's BT, Sky, TalkTalk Talk, and Virgin Media. Um, we started forming the company last summer, uh, but officially launched in May of this year. And we've been established really to help parents get access quickly and easily to the best advice about keeping their children safe online. Um, I'm going to spend some time talking to you about the research that informed our proposition. Um, but before I do, I just wanted to acknowledge and thank numerous experts that have helped us get to this point. Um, clearly, four broadband service providers are not that knowledgeable in child internet safety, so we're thankful to have had the help and support from people like Lucy Faithful from the NSPCC, um, from FOSI, from SEOP, in pulling our proposition together. I think the thing that makes Internet Matters different is the fact that we have the ability to reach 90% of UK online households. So we've got, with the service provider support, the ability to communicate directly to those individuals in the home. So, do I just click down? Uh -huh. um, so what I'm going to do today is quickly talk you through the in insight that, set, that informed our proposition development, talk you briefly through what Internet Matters is, um, I'm then going to share with you how we're doing, which is, is hot off the press, because obviously we've only been launched for a couple of months, and then a little bit about our plans for the coming months. Um, when, we, when we kicked off Internet Matters, we felt it was important that we really needed to understand parents' needs, attitudes and behaviours to child online safety. We knew that there were lots of studies out there from uh, Ofcom and EU Kids Online that are really great, but we wanted to get to the heart of what parents thought and felt about online safety. Um, so we set about doing both a quantitative and a qualitative um, research exercise to, to give us that information. Um, we interviewed 1,500 parents with children in the age range of 0 to 16, so there was no real sort of defined age range we were looking at. They were nationally re representative across all the socioeconomic groups, and we did an online survey for about 15 minutes. We then backed that up to try and put some flavour and context around it with 12 focus groups around the UK. Um, we went to um, London, Coventry, Manchester and Leeds just to get that flavour. And they were in-depth um, focus groups of an hour and a half. And I think, as I say, it was important for us to understand um, the attitudes that parents had to online safety. Um, the single thing that came out when we asked them who's responsible for your child's online safety, which was encouraging, was that they think that they are. 96% say that um, they feel they're responsible for keeping their children safe online. But it's a different story when it comes to actually what they do about it. We actually found that 5% um, of parents take no action at all to keep their children safe online, and 13% rarely or never supervise their children. When we, when we looked into the details of what actions parents were taking, it tended to be focused on very much the controlling um, elements, technology elements, if you like, to keep their kids safe on, online. So 63% claimed to install safety software, security software, 55% restricted their child's internet use, 47% claimed to apply parental controls, and 45% claimed to only allow children to access trusted sites. What was really interesting was that there was very little about communicating and educating and talking to children about internet safety. This was one of the things that really hit home in our proposition development, that the majority of parents do not regularly speak to their children about internet security. So 60% only sometimes rarely or never, and 26% rarely or never. So a quarter of adults in the UK rarely or never speak to their children about online safety. So we felt that was a really important issue that we needed to address. The, the other thing that came up in our research was also the absence of social norms. Um, I'm a parent of two young children. I didn't grow up with Facebook and everything else that these that children use. Um, and parents are looking for what the new norm is so that they can benchmark what their children are doing against that new norm. So I think it was important that we needed to find more than a technical solution. We had parents that sort of half the time are using the technology that might be available to them, but they weren't actually sitting down and regularly speaking and communicating to their children about online safety. One of the other interesting um, data points that the research showed us was that age had a real impact on 
the um, uh, attitudes that the parents had to internet safety. It really peaked around the transitional 10 to 13 years of age, you know, in line when ch children move from primary school to secondary school. We felt that was a critical moment that we needed to address um, in our research. It also allowed us, whilst we wanted our proposition to be very broad and run from almost naught to 16, it also allowed us to focus our media when we were doing our media planning to try and target that key age range. So, there was a clear demand from parents. 74%, three quarters of parents, wanted to know more about online safety. 36% wanted to know about setting parental controls, even though half claimed they already did it. 36% wanted to know where to go to find good advice. 33% wanted to know how to deal with cyberbullying and crime. And 31% how to communicate with their children about behaving safely online. So that was really important. And there were two other insights that emerged for us as well that helped formulate and shape the approach that we took. The first was half our parents wanted to get that information in an online environment. And the second was, which was important for us, that parents believed that the ISPs, the service providers, had a role to play in keeping their children safe. So almost 40% felt that was... Um, so it kind of validated the ISP's role in this space. So in summary, there was four needs that really came out of the um, research study that we undertook. Parents wanted to understand their children's online behaviour, the risks associated with it, and what could be done to mitigate them. Parents wanted advice on how to talk to their children, keeping the conversations open and mature as the technology changes. They wanted help to control what their children were doing online, be it technical measures or setting limits. And they wanted to be able to monitor what their children were doing online and set conditions of their behaviour. And so that helped us formulate internetmatters.org and the strap line, learn about it, talk about it, deal with it. And that's how we position our proposition to parents, those three simple things. Parents should learn about what their children are doing online. Importantly, they should talk about what their children are doing online. And if it comes to it, they need to deal with it, um, either reacting to a situation or putting in place the technology to help protect their children. So Internet Matters was formed. Um, we had a very simple point of view, was that the internet matters, it's a great place, it's fun, it's engaging, children love it, we can't go against the sands of time and try and stop them getting on it, but keeping our children safe in that environment really matters as well. We wanted to empower parents, it sounds very sort of marketing spiel to make these confident informed choices, we don't want to tell parents how to parent, but we want to give them the information and tools and advice that they need to make those choices about how they approach online safety in their own home. And then we had some simple principles. We felt we needed to be straightforward, but not scary. We wanted to tell it how it is. We wanted to give parents the information about how it is in the UK today and what it's like to be a child on the internet today. But we don't want to intimidate parents into taking action. We wanted to be optimistic, but not sugar-coated. Um, you know, th there is no single solution, and we have to be realistic and pragmatic about that. I wanted to be collaborative, but not cobbled together. Access to expert co content in a structured way is, is really the key and at the heart of what Internet Matters is all about, making it really simple and easy for parents to get to um, expert content very quickly, and making it welcoming and not patronising. Parents don't want to feel like they're having to do an exam on internet safety, so when they land on our website, it's important they feel it's a welcoming place and a place that they want to stay and have a look around. So our proposition became the place where parents can access the most comprehensive and credible resources, information and support to keep their children safe online. I don't know whether many of you have had a chance to actually have a look at our website, but it's up there in bold green, internetmatters.org. Um, as I say, it launched in May. Um, it's a portal, not really, it's a website, but it is really a portal. Um, it contains content because obviously otherwise we'd just be a Google search engine and you would just put in cyberbullying and get, get a result. Um, so it's a structured kind of gateway to the expert, com um, expert content. So we have quite light touch content um, and it's very action orientated, what you can do as a parent to actually keep your children safe. Importantly, we strive to get parents to the information quickly and easily. So hopefully you're never more than two or three clicks away from finding the information that you want. Um, and it's for every parent. It's not just for parents with issues. We took the, the decision that we didn't just want to address 
issues when they happened. We wanted to help parents of the UK actually minimise the risk of something happening to their children. So it became, it's a site not just for how to deal with grooming or cyberbullying or seeing inappropriate content. It's a site that helps you just set things up so that your children are safer. Um, creatively, it's quite engaging and not scary. Um, it's colourful and not corporate or official. It's hopefully short and simple and easy to read. We try to write it in plain English um, with practical calls to action. And importantly, in, in this day of tablets and smartphones, it's completely mobile responsive. So it re-engineers itself to whatever the shape of your tablet or mobile phone is. So every parent, provided they've got some kind of internet device, can access this site and view our content. Um, we launched in May. Um, we had a, a launch event at the Museum of Modern Childhood. Um, and that campaign suggested that we reached more than 20 million um, UK households had the opportunity to see, see and hear about Internet Matters on the launch day. Um, we also kicked off on that day our media campaign, which was 1.1 million, which was launched across press, press radio and, and targeted digital media. You can see a few examples there. The one in four kids have seen sexual images. So again, that's a fact, uh, based grounded in research. Um, so we, we grounded our campaign in stats about um, children's behaviour online to, give, to fulfil the need that parents had to establish to understand the new social norms, but urge them to actually address some of the issues and take some action. Um, on the bottom left, you've got some examples of what our service providers did as well. Um, we now have Internet Matters logos on router boxes that get dis dispatched when you order broadband from one of the ISPs. We had emails going out, we had advertising campaigns, we were on their internal staff communications, customer magazines and so forth. Importantly, we put some tracking in place on our digital media and one of the things we were really proud of in a survey was that 86% of parents that saw our advertising said they would take some form of action in response to seeing it. Um, and that the top action was actually spoke to my child about staying safe online, which we think is the most important thing that a parent can do. Um, this is a bit sort of data heavy, but it just gives you an idea. I checked on today's figure, we're actually at 215,000 visitors, so we've had to date um, over 200,000 visitors. Um, we've got repeat visitors of 13%. The dwell time is very short. Um, you'll see there it's 47 seconds, which you think, well, actually, how much can parents be taking in in 47 seconds? I think, just to put that into context, A, we're a portal, so we're trying to get people to go off, and even on our homepage, we have numerous links to um, great resources for parents to go and look at. Um, but secondly, when you look at our natural search, where parents have actually put in a search term to do with child internet safety, the dwell time is more like three minutes. So there's just a mix of people coming to our site through advertising, if you like, and coming to our site through wanting to come and actually explore the content that's there. Um, the top five most visited pages that, are, that we have are our homepage, obviously, but then parental controls. Um, probably not too surprising, a fair chunk of our advertising campaign when we launched was dedicated to promoting and making parents aware that the four networks all have their own parental controls products. But then it's inappropriate content grooming and cyberbullying. And again, the top five links out, again, slightly unsurprisingly, at the moment, it's the four broadband providers, where it's linking out to how to set your parental controls. And then the next most popular one is a general parent's guide from um, Safer Internet Centre. And as a site, we're currently getting about 8,000 visitors a week, which we're um, reasonably pleased with. We've got a long way to go, because um, there's a lot of parents in the UK, um, but we're well on that journey. So just moving forward, in, in the future, we've got three key things that we want to do. Um, if we really want parents to take us seriously, we have to have a best-in-class proposition. We've kind of got to have a great site that, that fulfills its obligation of getting parents to the best expert content. Um, the second thing we need to do is drive the awareness of Internet Matters. Parents need to know we exist, and we need to drive traffic to the website so they can take the appropriate choices and actions. And then finally, we really want to try and establish Internet Matters as a cross-industry body. The four service providers set this up initially, but their aspiration and desire is to grow this into um, having multiple partners that represent all aspects of this sort of ecosystem of providing internet services to children. So whether that's a content provider or a handset provider, um, a retailer, they're all involved in one way or another of providing the internet, and we feel they have an obligation in this space. So a few things that we're doing to make sure we have a best-in-class proposition. 
We're establishing, we're trying to establish what we're calling an expert advisory panel, which is a core of about six people who will give us strategic advice on what to do with the proposition. Um, you know, as I say, the four broadband providers are not trying to say that they're the best child internet safety experts. They're clearly not. So we need to embrace um, experts and let those experts guide us in how to develop the proposition properly. And we also have an editorial board where we continue to work to ensure that our content is the most up-to-date and reflects the most up-to-date advice. In terms of driving traffic, we'll keep coming back to the market. Um, both independently and with the ISPs to promote Internet Matters. So as it stands today, the ISPs are still promoting Internet Matters on bills and envelopes and in emails. But we'll also, in September, we plan to do um, some joint activity with ChildNet. Um, we've taken a book that they have called DigiDuck, which is aimed for five to seven-year-olds, and we've turned that into an app, an interactive app. And we plan to launch that in September. And we're also looking in September of trying to actually work with schools a bit more. One of the interesting stats that came out in our survey was that 70% of parents look to schools to provide them the information they need on internet safety for their children. So we want to provide schools with the tools and support and downloadable resources that make it really easy to tell parents about internet matters and to give them access to great resources that they, could, that parents, they can give to parents for them to complete at home with their children. And then the final point is that we're, under, we're in discussions with several commercial partners. We're trying to focus on partners that will really extend our reach and try and broaden that message. Because the more people and the more parents we can tell about Internet Matters, hopefully we can try and minimise the risk um, for our children. So thank you very much. I know it's been a whistle stop tour, probably talked really quickly. Um, but do take a chance to have a look at, the, at internetmatters.org. Thank you. Thank you very much.